hey there, welcome to Hiker Homily number 31. For the week, what the heck week are we in? The week of August 27th. August 27th, Hiker Homily 31. How's it going? <sighs> That's how I feel right now, I'm telling you what. Oh my goodness. Um, yeah, I took a little bit of break from the hiking world this last weekend and uh, uh, doing my other hobby, I used to uh, collect comics, and now I have this giant collection of comics that are I don't do anything with now, and have decided I'm going to do it, get rid of it. And so for uh, a few years now, I've been with uh, some friends of mine doing some vending at uh, local comic shows and things like that. So this weekend was Stockton Con, and I was there with some good friends. We had a big booth, and. Uh, sold some merchandise, I sell games, I sell comics, all that kind of stuff. So I was busy doing that, and that means lots of lifting. You have to get all your merchandise to the venue. you got to set up your booth, and for us that means large poles and hoisting a big banner and, and all kinds of stuff like that. I'll put a little picture up there so you can see our booth name and things like that. And I also have an Instagram channel for, or we have an Instagram channel for that, so come check us out. A um, little free plug there for our, our comic group. But that's what I've been up to as of uh, the last Hiker Homily. It's just busy doing that kind of stuff. How are you guys? Okay. Hey, today we're going to talk about... I, I did a little quick one a while ago on, you know, what items are, uh, you know, quote-unquote luxury. They're not considered, you know, a must-have and things like that. Um, I'm going to get a little more detailed on one of those items, and that is trekking poles talking about whether or not you need trekking poles and and things like that so it should be a brief hiker homily because there's not a whole lot to say on it it's it's pretty common sense that yes trekking poles are not necessarily mandatory for most people now there are some folks who i really would say you know what you 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 need to have them you should have them and things like that and but really it's going to be the individual's um choice for me, uh, when I was younger, <clears throat> trekking pole technology really wasn't there. Trekking poles really weren't that much of a thing when I was hiking. Now, there were people who hiked with hiking staves. Um, those were, were popular back in the day, back in the 80s when I started backpacking when I was young. Um, you know, a pole, a staff. In fact, I have one that's kind of mostly decorative now. It's got the little badges from different places I've hiked, you know, nailed to it and things like that. Um, but, you know, people would carry those and, you know, they had multiple uses. They were, uh, you know, not only helped you with your walking, um, but you could use it to help make a shelter. It was a defensive uh, weapon if you needed one. Just all kinds of things you could do with a, a hiking staff and things. But really, trekking poles weren't a huge thing at the time. Uh, they, I think they were around. They had been invented by then, but they just weren't as big as they are now. Now they're 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 out there. Um and I never used to use any kind of a hiking staff or, or trekking poles back when I was trekking all over the place as a young man. Um, but I discovered a little over a year ago um, that with my knee issues and my back issues that I have sometimes, trekking poles for me have become a must if I'm really doing elevation. If I'm just going to be walking flatland, you know, like the levees I train on out here, or just other stuff that's just predominantly flat, not really doing a whole lot of elevation change and stuff like that. I'm okay. I, 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 do, I do fine without any kind of help like that. If I'm going to be going up and down hills and things like that, trekking poles. Seriously, I, I, they're just, um, they, they, they just help me keep going. Uh, they help the impact that elevation up and down has on my knees and things like that because my arms can do a little bit of the work as well and just kind of divvy up that that labor of going up and down hills and stuff like that so that it's not all on my knees or on my back and uh, so for me they have kind of become a must and I have a feeling that that's going to be true for others out there especially others approaching my age in the 50s um uh, or, you know, whatever age you are, if you have some kind of knee or, or joint problems like that, trekking poles will help. 
Now, one of the things that I will say about trekking poles, as I said with um, the uh, the other hiker homily where I talked about, you know, quote unquote luxury items, is there are a lot of trekking poles out there that will cost a, a, a pretty big amount of money. And they are nice trekking poles. I'm not going to say that they're a waste of money. Um, but I have discovered, and I will 100% admit, could be complete luck on my part, um, that at least for me anyway, I have not had to spend a huge amount of money. The trekking poles I use right now are, um, and I'm not plugging any particular store. I bought them at a big box store and you know what the biggest box store is. Come on. Um, but yeah, not to plug, uh, uh, because you know, there, there are several big box stores that, that sell cheap camping equipment. And some of that equipment really is cheap camping equipment. Look out. But these trekking poles that I got from Walmart, um, again, not advertising in it. That's just a fact. I bought these there. Um, they have lasted so far um, about a year and a half and not a year and a half of messing around on little levee roads. Uh, a year and a half of some serious hikes. Uh, these trekking poles survived the Lost Coast Trail, um, Sierra Mountain Backpack Trips, and a couple of other day hikes and stuff that I have done in the Sierra foothills and and the coastal mountain foothills. And they have been a huge help. There were many times on just the Lost Coast Trail alone that these things were jammed up between boulders, uh, had to carry my entire weight when I like almost slipped or fell uh, to help get across river crossings. These trekking poles have, have you know, it's, it's not like, you know, they've lasted because, oh, you know, we're just kind of cruising around this flatland. Uh, I have taken these these trekking poles out on some serious trails and they have lasted and uh they cost me like 19.99 okay so it is possible to get a decent pair of trekking poles without and i'll do a review on the actual poles so i'm not going to plug them right now the actual names and things like that i'm just saying that you can get trekking poles at places that sell them cheap and you'll hopefully get lucky and have them be good trekking poles that will last you over a year of serious hiking. Um, if you're doing minor stuff, just little, little day hikes here and there, they should last you quite a bit longer in established trails. Um, but the ones I've got, I have taken through some crazy stuff and they've lasted. I mean, they're, they're still good. One of them has a little bend to it, but other than that, they work just fine. And they're, uh, they, they keep on trekking, as they say. So trekking poles, uh, as far as I'm concerned, they're a must for some people. If, you, if you're concerned about joints and you just need that added oomph to get up the hills and get down the hills to help your knees, help your back, any kind of situation like that, I would consider them um, a requirement for your uh, hiking equipment. You really should have them. Um, if you're a young person, you just have no joint issues and, and stuff like that, then you don't need to. But you know what? I have a feeling that if you were to take up using them, you may prevent some joint issues in your future uh, if you have that kind of uh, uh, support. I, I, I really feel that way about them, trekking poles. So there you go. That's a simple simple topic there this week. Uh, really easy. You got a lot of stuff going on, so I decided to keep it simple, and that's about it. That's just kind of a, a new thing, but it's just one of those things I want to talk about that I really think that they are for some hikers a necessity and you don't have to spend, you know, seventy, eighty dollars on a set of trekking poles and special tips. You can you can get them at certain places on the cheap and have them last at least a few hikes, uh, if not for, in my case, um a couple of hiking seasons, a couple of serious hiking seasons. So there you go, folks. As always, if you want to get a hold of me and comment on any of the subjects I've talked about, you can comment on the actual videos that are posted. You can comment via the email, hikingforhealthca at gmail.com. You can comment on my Instagram channel or my Facebook page at hikingforhealthca. And also, as always, thank you so much for those of you who are watching this channel of mine and sticking with me. I appreciate it so much. Thank you. Thank you. And we will see you next week.